Welcome back. Today we have on Dr. Mark Levy from Harvard Eye Associates going to talk about a couple eye ailments that people have may seen, maybe they had, but they didn't know what they were. It's good to have you here today. Thank you for Always having Always a me. pleasure. Thank you, and uh, we're going to bring these up on the screen and I'm going to let you pronounce them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about pinguaculi and pterygia. Um, as you can see from the, can I refer to, I'm sorry. Here we go. All right. Um, as you can see on the, on the diagram on the left, that is a pinguacula, and that, both of these conditions, the pinguacula and the pterygium, occur on the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is the, is the outer layer that covers the white of the eye. Okay. So the pinguacula is restricted to the conjunctiva area, and the, the pterygium extends and encroaches onto the cornea. Uh, the causes of these conditions are generally genetics. There are definitely certain folks who are more predisposed to getting these. Mm -hmm. um, overexposure to sunlight. Sunlight is the biggest issue. If we were able to put young children into sunglasses and keep them, keep them wearing them, we'd be really successful at, at, yeah. at, at, at That's avo the trick. avoiding these. They all love sunglasses. The trick is how do you keep young kids in sunglasses exactly. and how do you keep them from losing them and et cetera. Yeah, I have a question. So, yes. And um, when I see the two different conditions here, the one at the top here, the pinguicula, <laughs> thank you, uh, that just seems like, uh, at least from the diagram here, a small growth, and the other one, I, what I'm wondering is, how does it extend over to cover part of the iris and people? Well, depending on, on exposure. So if, uh, if people who are extremely sensitive will can possibly start out as a pinguacula and then it will extend as it grows as the irritation continues. So, so okay. increased exposure to sunlight, wind, dust, smoke. Generally, we're talking about people who are, um, who are fishermen, skiers, Outdoor people will, these are, okay. these are very common conditions that we see in really? the office okay. on, on a daily basis. Wow. Um, okay. And as far as the length of time that, uh, you know, you, you put some of the symptoms here that they grow, is it, is it, is it just a couple of weeks or is it over a length of time? No, it's over time? a life. These usually begin early on in life. So sensitivity okay. begins early on in life. Very often, when they're small, they're not even noticeable, and they're, and they're symptomless. There's normally no symptoms involved. But as we age and we get dry eyes, because these little areas are raised, the friction of blinking up against sure. them creates inflammation, and then we need to deal with that okay. medically. All right, and I can certainly understand that, because you're blinking your eyes, you're just irritating it more and more. Exactly, so okay. there's friction involved in that. And I see um, here, one of the things is blurred vision. Is yes. it, once it gets to that point, is it progressed so generally quite a bit? The, the pinguacula does not create blurred vision because it's restricted to the white of the eye, right. whereas the pterygium extends onto the cornea and it can reshape the cornea. So it creates an wow. astigmatism, and, okay. and so we may need to correct that astigmatism. If that, can we go back to the, go uh, back to to the, the, uh, the original diagram? Yeah, the original, if we could go back a slide or two, and uh, we'll show it. Uh, this one here? Okay, so very if good. We, if we look at the pterygium, if it extends into the pupil area, into the right. center of the eye, it'll then obviously block vision, yeah. and at that point, surgery is indicated. Okay. Generally, the treatment for these things is just lubricating drops and warm compresses. Warm compresses in order to improve and stimulate tearing. And um, Does that mean that they will dissolve? No, no. no. Okay. These, these will not dissolve. Okay. And the treatment when it is surgical for the pterygium is not a simple removal. It's, it's, it's similar to a skin graft. So tissue is grafted from underneath the eyelid wow. onto the spot where they remove that. Uh, and it's generally very successful surgery. Wow. So uh, we see a lot of fair amount of those. And of course, you have a, you know, a small infant here with glasses on, which, uh, you know, it's funny. My, my daughter loves glasses, loves sunglasses, but doesn't want to wear them. Oh, I, can we buy these? Can we get these? And, you know, she probably has three or four pair and yet never wears them. 
you know, if wear, you can get a child to wear them, that'll be fantastic. If you can get them to hold on to them and not lose them, and I would think would be just ideal. being outside, I know as as a kid, I I wore sunglasses kind of early on, uh, just because the the sunlight just would bother me, and you would think for her, she has light colored eyes as well that yeah. she would. But we try real know. hard to promote it. Yeah, but it's an uphill battle. Yeah, getting kids to keep and wear sunglasses. Yeah, exactly. But it, it's a necessary thing. So this is the uh, the best, at least the starting prevention for it. But as you said, depending on what you do, if you're out in the sun a lot, if you're, I guess, also in an area where a, a windy condition as well, like you, like you said, people who work on fishing boats. Absolutely. So in our in our area here in Southern California, where we're in desert conditions and where yeah. we have the Santa Ana winds, those are all conditions that will definitely increase the the chances of getting these pink waculi and pterygiums. Okay, and you mentioned that they can be genetic as well. Yes, there's a genetic component. We know that some people who work on the same jobs will get them and some won't, so we know that there's a genetic component. Some folks are much okay. more susceptible to these All right. than others. Now, what about if somebody just is uh, in a windy condition, you know, you go out, to, uh, go out to the desert, you go out to Palm Springs and, you know, you get the windstorms out there. Maybe they're just out there for the weekend. Can that one time start these no, up or it's over unlikely this is a long-term okay over a lifetime almost type of condition okay what about so, coming in for a routine eye exam is this something you folks can pick up absolutely it's okay a very easily diagnosed condition we as i said we see it, they're pretty they're more common than you would imagine mm -hmm. so we do see these lubricating drops warm compresses are the basic treatment for them depending on how bad the inflammation is we may want to go on to a steroid drop um, they can be very painful and irritating, scratchy conditions. Okay. Particularly under dry conditions. So people who have these will suffer a lot in Las Vegas where they're in air conditioned rooms and the dry climates sure. and the desert. Now, aside from surgical, uh, with the other treatments that you talked about, the warm compresses and, and the drops, uh, will those keep these, you say they, they won't just dissolve them or get rid no, of them, but no. they keep them at bay. They keep them small enough exactly. where they become... Exactly. If okay. we can stop them from progressing and growing and spreading onto the cornea, that's the goal. Okay. All right. Very good information. And a couple things, uh, conditions I've not heard about before. I think we've seen people with these once in a while. Oh, but, uh, like I said, they're fairly yeah. common. Very often you can look at an eye and not even know that it's there because sometimes they are clear. Sometimes they, they, they sometimes will be a, a slight yellow color, a mm -hmm. little yellowish, but generally very often they're clear and you don't notice them. People aren't aware of them, but we see them every day. All right. So very common. Very good. Thank you very much for coming on today. Thank you. We for appreciate it. Great information. Hope to see you again. I appreciate it. All thank right. You. We will be right back in just a moment. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much.